Many people don't like to think about planning for death. We prepare for almost everything else. Vacations, cell phone plans, college, etc. Estate planning is essentially to protect our loved ones and assets. If something were to happen to you, who would make the medical decisions on your behalf? Does that person know what your choices are and who would take care of your children? If you are not prepared to answer those questions, we have something special for you today. On this episode of the Caribbean Network. Welcome to the Caribbean Network, where we highlight Caribbean-owned businesses here in the metro Atlanta area. Today, we've partnered with Carib Lingo Clothing for today's episode. Today, we bring you a Caribbean talent, Miss Carolyn S. DeWint Esquire, lead arbitrator and founder of DeWint Legal Services. How are you doing today, Carolyn? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm awesome. Welcome to the Caribbean Network. Thank you for having me. No problem. <laughs> So, Carlin, can you please give us and our audience a synopsis of your journey from your heritage to you becoming a practicing lawyer? So, I was born and raised in the beautiful island of St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent my weekends in the BVI, Tartola BVI, mm -hmm. and I left the Virgin Islands in high school mm -hmm. and moved to New York, okay. where I completed high school, mm -hmm. and then I went to undergrad upstate New York. Mm -hmm. I spent a little time in the military mm -hmm. where I finished my master's and after the military I went to law school okay. and here I am. Oh, oh awesome. Wow. Look at you. Military. Yeah, military. Yes. All right. U.S. Army. Boom. Nice idea. <laughs> so when you were younger, did you always aspire to be a lawyer or what did you aspire to be? Originally, I wanted to be a teacher and um, as of seven years old, I was in the third grade and I had a bad accident, broke my leg, mm -hmm. and spent the rest of that year in the hospital. I did all of my work in the hospital, maintained a B-plus average, mm -hmm. and my teacher saw it fit mm -hmm. to recommend retention because of the absence of time in the classroom. I felt like it was a severe injustice, mm -hmm. but at seven years old, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have very much That's say. Right. Yeah. And so at that point, I told my mother, I'm going to be an attorney and eventually become a judge so that I could protect myself as well as other people from injustices. Oh, wow. So for you currently, how far along do you see yourself becoming a judge? <laughs> Good question. So, um, Everything that I do or have done mm -hmm. since that day has been leading to that point. Okay. So I have spent several um, of my class time in law school mm -hmm. uh, doing things that would allow me to have experience and exposure with judgeships. And in fact, last weekend I did a judicial round table and had the honor of meeting Clarence Thomas. Oh, wow. Oh. So, you know, I've put myself in a situation where I have the exposure and I get the guidance mm -hmm. of different judges. And so while I'm practicing, I, I noticed that um, a lot of people say, well, why have you such a wide mm -hmm. area of practice? Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the things that I have been told, make sure you have the exposure right. so that way when you're sitting on a bench, mm -hmm. you can have the experience in different fields so that you can be able to give the best guidance possible. 
Awesome. Okay. Wow. Right. Okay. So, Carolyn, a favorite quote of mine is, if you stay ready, you won't have to get ready. As stated previously, estate planning is often up to overlooked, especially in our Caribbean community. Can you explain to our audience what estate planning is and the benefits of it? So, um, I have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. It's definitely overlooked in our community, mm -hmm. whether they're here in the States or, or at home, yeah. and especially back home. No God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, estate planning is simply planning for the future a lot of people take estate planning as oh when i get old mm -hmm. i'll take care of it then because they correlate estate planning with a death plan right and yeah. people are so afraid to face the fact that brace yourself one day we will die mm -hmm. yep. it is a reality now um fortunately estate planning doesn't just address death okay it addresses illnesses and if COVID-19 hasn't taught us anything else, mm -hmm. things can happen when you least expect, expect it, it and something that you can even fathom. How many of you would have ever thought that the U.S. would have seen a pandemic such as this in this day and age yeah. with technology? Yep, correct. <laughs> but yet, do you know hundreds of people, if not thousands of people died because doctors and people that you know you've never met mm -hmm. they've never met their families never met has made the decision for them because they did not take the time to plan right and so planning what will happen what decisions you want to have made for you if you're incapacitated mm -hmm. if for some reason you got into a car accident which in you know, those don't happen in Georgia, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a car accident yeah. and you know, you end up in a coma, even if it's a short term coma. Right, yeah. Or if you have to have surgery, do you want them to do everything there is to save your life? Yeah, definitely. They don't know you. Why right. should they do it? True. What if, what if, you know, they say, well, you know, he's an alcoholic or he's, he may not make it, right. but in fact, you may make it. Mm -hmm. You have to make those decisions ahead of time because who knows your best interest better than you. That is so true. does, when we do estate planning, does this mean like with DNAs when it comes to like, um, hospital emergencies and type of stuff like that? So estate planning means as I was saying, uh, you know, if if something happens, I can decide, keep me on life support. If I'm going to be on life support or if I'm not going to be on life support, do I want to be fed? Mm. Okay. What if I can't eat? Do I want a feeding tube? Yeah. Do I just want to die naturally? Mm. You know, uh, do I want to be res resuscitated if for some reason I flatline on the operating table. These are decisions that if you don't make them, someone will. What if, back to the car accident, you have a car accident, let's say you do have a living will mm -hmm. in place, right. medical advance directive, and to say what to do. What about your children? What if you have minor children? Who is going to care for them? Yeah. If you don't make that decision, someone will. Now, a judge may not know that your aunt Betty is an alcoholic under the cover, but you might know, yeah. the family might know, right. but on paper, she may look like a great person for your Her child. Mm. So they're going to go by what they see on paper. On paper, yeah. you know, and you know, while your grandma may be the best person, mm -hmm. they may not look to grandma because grandma may be a little up in age, yeah. but as Caribbean people, you know, we're accustomed to this extended family that a lot of americans are not used to right yeah so again who knows what's better for you than for you yourself, yeah. so estate planning a lot of people think well i don't have anything why should i start now mm -hmm. because you don't have anything <laughs> probably we need to start. So yeah perhaps you need, need to, to st yeah, start now put things in place yeah exactly so that when you do have something it just falls in line and you can you know exactly where the assets are going you know who you want to give something to mm -hmm. you know your your diamond ring that was passed down 
to the generations. generations yeah. Who do you want it to go to? Mm -hmm. So I have a side question. Why do you think in our community it is so not spoken about? <laughs> that is a good question. I mean, I think that it's a combination of habit mm -hmm. and pride. Oh yeah, we know West Indian people are all pride like over here. <laughs> you know, I mean, if somebody's sick, they ain't gonna talk about it right. because, you know, don't let it out. You mm -hmm. don't want nobody to know. That's pride. And habit, well, for example, both of my grandparents passed well, the house mm -hmm. was in my grandfather's mother's name. What? Yeah. To your great grandmother. Exactly. <laughs> wow. right so now, <laughs> exactly. And my grandfather had two families. He was married to my grandmother. I know y'all don't know. Like Caribbean people don't know nothing about no, that. No, not about that. <laughs> right. Oh, no, you're very innocent. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, my aunts on. In, from the other family whom I love dearly because I know they'll be watching they already know I love them dearly <laughs> <laughs> and my aunts and uncle well my aunt and my uncles mm -hmm. from the marriage mm -hmm. my grandparents marriage mm -hmm. who going who gets the house who, yeah. who going not just the house the plantation and my grandfather was a planner okay but how many of you ever tell your kids to do something and they don't do it? Yeah. So he planned, I remember the day he called a meeting mm -hmm. and had everybody, all the children to come. We weren't invited, right. just the children. Yeah. And he told them how he wanted everything divided because he said he doesn't want any fighting. Right. Okay. We know how but it goes. But did he put it on paper? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and even if he had put it on paper, mm -hmm. because my great-grandmother didn't probate her estate. Mm. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, I know the drama that was there already. <laughs> Is there? <laughs> Is there? Okay, cool. That's interesting. But yeah, I had to ask that question. Um, I got one more side question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is a will part of estate planning or not? Yes. Okay. Um, because I'll, again, in our community, ain't nobody writing no will way. out. And that's why we have so much feuding I inside of families. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, um, if we don't plan the whatever cohesiveness mm -hmm. that exists, Oh, trust me, there's nothing like a little piece of land or Some money. A, a little a little penny or a cup of cent, as my grandmother used to say, <laughs> yeah. that can cause a feud or even an heirloom. Oh, yeah. You know, and so if you don't let them know, and it's, to me, it's not sufficient to just make the will. Mm -hmm. Have that discussion with your family yeah. and let them know. This, this is my expectation, not just with the will and the assets, mm -hmm. but the medical decisions as well. Yeah. Let them know because, I mean, I lost my mom and I know how difficult it is when you are going through the loss of a loved one. And if you could prolong their life, yeah. you would want to do everything to do that. But what if that's not what they wanted? Yeah. What if they don't want to suffer like that? Yeah. And if you discuss that with them ahead of time, it gives them the opportunity to deal with those feelings mm. and have that resolution. So it all helps with helps with the, the grieving process. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Information and jewels. So, Carolyn, in researching your company, we've learned that your law firm offers many services. So we'd like to try something new. <laughs> I will list each and every service provided that you do and you can give our audience like a brief explanation and description of what everything em um, encompasses. Okay. So, will and trust. So, as we've discussed, a will and a trust actually, both of them are documents that help you to put your affairs in order your affairs for while you're alive as well as after you've passed on 
including preparing for who's going to take care of your children. Mm -hmm. Because as for me, that is and very yeah. more Im important, you know, more important yeah. than anything else I could ever acquire. Um, the difference between a will and a trust, mm -hmm. the biggest difference, a will has to be probated. So if you can't afford to pay for a trust, go ahead and pay for a will. If you can afford to pay for a trust, mm -hmm. I suggest you do that first, okay. as opposed to doing the will, because a trust is immediate upon death. There's no going to the courts and trusting that the judge is going to mm. go along with you because you make a will doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to turn out exactly the way you wrote it in your will because it still has to go forth in front of a judge. Okay. And your family, if they disagree with what's in there, they're going to fight. Problems. They're going to <laughs> fight. And then, you know, a judge has to make the ultimate decision as to, of the feuding sides, you know, where to go. Of course, your will gives the judge direction in which to go. Mm -hmm. Have there been cases where, like, let's say I write my will and I say, well, Benzo get half a mil mm -hmm. and Bobby gets 200k and then Ron gets 5k. Can I be your friend? Yeah, 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 of oh, course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's say that, right? And let's say Ronald is like, well, well, I've done more for her and he can back up like medical bills. This and that and the third. Okay. Who can, can the judge overturn Benzo getting half of the money versus... So that's two different things. Okay. So what you decide to leave for them has nothing to do with the bills. Okay. So... Benzo, if Benzo has paid certain things for you while you were ill, before you died or whatever, mm -hmm. then he can make a claim against the estate. Okay. And that claim should be paid out. Okay. So that's separate from the inheritance. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. So, power of attorney and guardianship. So, power of attorney gives someone, so let's say, um, let's say you're sick. Unfortunately, you caught COVID and you're quarantined, but you have some business you need to attend to. Like, for example, you were getting ready to close on your house. You don't want to lose the sale or get penalized. So you say, hey, Benzo, do you mind closing on the house for me? Well, Benzo say, uh, I'm not going to take on that loan for you. No, 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 Benzo. It's going to be in my name. I just need you to physically be there and sign the documents for me. You can get a power of attorney. You give him authority to act as if it were you. It's called your attorney in fact. Okay. And he can sign as your attorney in fact, but you will be the one liable for the note. Okay. So anything that your attorney in fact commits you to, mm -hmm. you're responsible for. So if I die, that means he would have to take it over? No. No, okay. No. If you die, your power of attorney dies too. Interesting. And uh, guardianship. guardianship. So earlier we talked about if you're incapacitated and you are unable to care for your children, mm -hmm. who do you want to care for your children? It will be a guardian right. that is appointed to care for your child or children and hopefully you would have planned ahead and carefully selected that person. If not, the courts will um, appoint a guardian over mm -hmm. those children. There's also adult guardianship. So, for example, I had a client uh, to call me last week. His daughter's in uh, rehab mm -hmm. and he wants to get guardianship over her. So, because she's not a threat to herself or anything, she would have to agree to the guardianship. Now, if you have someone that maybe has a mental capacity that or that's out there making, you know, unsafe decisions for them or their financial well-being, right. you can apply to the court for a guardianship over them or and their finances, like the Britney Spears. So that was my next question. What's the difference? So you said adult guardianship. What's the difference between adult guardianship and conservatorship? Is that how you pronounce it? 
with, with, with Britney, yeah, with Britney, Britney Spears. Spears. Yeah. So with Britney Spears, he has control over her and her assets. Okay. So basically, she. She has to do whatever, whatever, he, says. whatever he says. Like, um, you know, it, it, a lot of us in the legal community really cringe at this situation. Um, I understand, or I, I want to believe that it started out very innocently, but money has a way of uh, mm -hmm. right, uh, corrupting our minds sometimes. Yeah. And I am not saying that that is what happened right. or what didn't happen. Right. I am not party to that. Right, gotcha. We do my legal disclosure there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, determining whether or not a person can have a child, that is... That's harsh. I couldn't imagine. You know, I know what it's like to want to have a child mm -hmm. and can't conceive a child. Mm -hmm. And then you can imagine that you can conceive a child, but someone else is, is forcing you to not be able to have one. Yeah. So. Whole different level. Yeah. Right those, there. The, yeah. That's that's. Heavy. Uh, whole <laughs> different level. Yeah. Okay. Onto a different topic. <laughs> and another reason why you want a plan. So, moving on to a better note, uh, <laughs> contract formation and review. So I love contracts. I have always said since my first week of contracts mm -hmm. contracts are sexy <laughs> they're just i mean they're just like nothing else mm -hmm. um you can write something on a napkin and sign your name to it and you have created a contract what that's simple. really that's simple it doesn't have to be a formal process but in today's world when you when you get your cell phone bill and you agree to those terms that you don't read. Yeah. You signed a contract. Yeah. You know, um, when you get a user agreement for a new app and you just want to get to it and so you sign, okay, 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 you yeah. signed a contract and you didn't bother to read the terms. I like to bring out my pen and circle. I scratch out the initial <laughs> and, you know, what I'm not going to agree to, I'm not going to agree to. Yeah. So the people with the good fortitude that when they get a contract, whether it's an employment contract or whether it's a contract to lease out a portion of your land mm -hmm. or whether it's a, a contract for a sale of a good right. or a contract to, there's a lot of truckers going out there now. Um, and if they come straight out of school, you know, the company's supposed to help pay their tuition or pay their tuition for them. Right. Well, you better read the fine print. You know, there are conditions to that. Right. And so a lot of people don't understand what the fine print is. That fine know. print, that fine print be fine though. Bring yeah. it, <laughs> bring it to me. <laughs> okay. Oh, so you love that? Yes. <laughs> I do. She said contracts are sexy. Sexy, right, sexy. right. I have <laughs> I can read the contract and tell you in lamest terms, this is what that means. Okay. You know, I, I've had clients to bring me contracts what they thought were really good contracts and they were benefiting and really and truly it, they were being taken advantage of in the worst way and when i break it down to them in lamest terms they're mm -hmm. like oh no i would never agree to that well if you sign this contract you will yeah. so it may save you a lot of heartache now i also do um contract defense like okay. i have a client right now that i just had to write a brief on mm -hmm. um where she signed a contract that it wasn't for her. She signed the contract saying that if they don't pay, then I'll pay. Yeah, guarantee contract, be careful with those. It's like co-signing for something. It's the same difference, you know. Um, I heard that's what a lot of, not, I didn't mean to cut you no, off, but that's ahead. what a lot of um, like sport contracts be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> you want to be very careful before you guarantee. I don't care if it's your mom and you know and you love your mom from the time you was inside of her belly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would be wary about guaranteeing anything. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it just so happens in this particular case, I told you our contracts are sexy. Yeah. Words matter. What you say means something. And so for this particular contract case, 
they're bringing her to court here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. But their contract says no action will be filed in the state of Georgia. Another state, and for confidentiality, I'm not going to yeah, give yeah, the yeah, details, yeah. but another state has complete control. Oh, can you dismiss this action for me, please? Simple as that. Ooh. Why are we here? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, can I have some attorney fees? Frivolous contract. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Chop that mic. Boom. So. Yeah. You know, but if you were to go defend that action, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know. And yeah. that's what they're counting on. And the reason why they didn't want to bring it in that state is because the statute of limitations has run in that state. Okay. Again, read the contract. Mm. Sexy. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this one on the list is my favorite one. I think most Caribbean people can relate to this one in some way, somehow. Landlord and tenant disputes. Oh, I love those. <laughs> right under contract. I, I said to Benzo earlier, I was like, this has to be our favorite one. If you didn't know she was Caribbean, this would tell you that she was Caribbean. <laughs> so, True story, from the time I was in the seventh grade, mm -hmm. I had been helping my grandmother manage her rental properties. Okay. So, and I don't take the money unless I happen to sign the original agreement. I don't need to take the money, it's her money. Yeah. But, skip out. I will track you down. And I'm going to, I don't care where you hide. I'm going to find you because I created the contract right. and I know what I put in there and what you have to put. And so I've been doing it so long that, you know, while now that I'm actually, my degree has caught up to me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think I was born an attorney. <laughs> so, um, I love doing them. And I've only represented three tenants since I've been doing this. I generally am on the other side, mm -hmm. but I only represent uh, landlords that have a genuine issue with a tenant, right. not because they just want to be a slumlord or, or they take want to, advantage. Right. Yeah. No, I'm very selective with that. Mm -hmm. So I love working for myself. Okay. So if you are thinking you're going to be shacking up in my client's home and not paying because you're think that the moratorium on landlord eviction is just forever right. not going to happen. Mm. Wow. And yeah. you won't believe there are people, I have, a, I have two cases right now in the courts that I'm waiting on the eviction order to be signed. They've been in the property for over a year or just about a year. Yeah. Zero rent. Or oh, they're living their best life. Best, best life. <laughs> I had one in Henry County. I love Henry County. They're about the law. Yeah. And they will enforce the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. And they were in there for just about a year. And the, the program, the government program to help with the rental assistance paid up that year and gave them an extra month. And th that tenant on the very next month, the first month that they would have had to pay, mm -hmm. said, I didn't know that I was supposed to pay. And they still live in the... Oh, is this America? Or no, 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 no. Oh, no, I was no, about no. to say no, that. No, 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 not at my clients. I was oh, about to no, say I went and immediately filed the eviction. And I was there to personally oversee the sheriff's service. And that individual literally said to me, I can't believe you're going to have the sheriff put my children out. Me? You didn't pay your rent? Not only did you not pay your rent, I helped you. I didn't have to. Right. I don't represent the tenant. I helped you get the assistance from the government program. It benefited my client. It benefited you. It was a win-win win -win, Yeah, win-win situation, yeah. Our agreement was, after that, you would pay like you're supposed to, and right. we would renew the contract. Right. Right. <laughs> Never happened. They got two new cars. Oh, wow. Fancy. Living their best life, like I said. <laughs> That's life. Like I said. <laughs> so I feel sorry for their new landlord. 
Damn. You yeah. know, because you have people that are habitual. Yeah, that's, that sounds like a habit right there. And yeah. us Caribbean people, we like to own property. Yeah. And so if you have property that you're renting and you have one of these people that like to take advantage and they know the system, mm -hmm. yeah. don't go it alone. Yeah. Don't go it alone. Yeah. Makes sense. Let me help you. I'm passionate about this. Let me help you. See that? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to group these two because I believe they kind of coincide. Um, uncontested divorce and then step parent adoption. So uncontested divorces. Um, Sorry. It's okay. I generally, I love children, mm -hmm. but I don't want to watch your children grow up because I have so many kids and grandkids to watch grow up. <laughs> so I, I, I genuinely, you know, all joking aside, I don't like doing drawn out divorces because mm -hmm. it's so painful to watch. Yeah. And if the divorce is going to be a big battle, I respectfully decline those cases. But if two parties can agree to disagree, but agree enough that, okay, I want to go my separate way, you yeah. want to go your separate way, this is how we're going to divide assets. This is how we're going to divide the the parenting time. Yeah. You know, um, you don't have to worry about child support because the state of Georgia implements how child support is going to be allocated. Right, yeah. And so if it's a case like that, oh, we could get your divorce happening like within 45 days. We can get you divorced quickly. That quick. As long as, and, and so most of the cases, you won't even have to go to court. You, I, I draft the document mm -hmm. and we get them notarized. Mm -hmm. You get them back to me. I file them with the courts. We have a consent order. The judge signs off on it. Happy divorce day to you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's... Okay. I'm learning a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> so the step parent adoption process, no. Oh, I like those. You do? Yeah, they're warm and fuzzy. So if, you know, Unfortunately, sometimes we we don't have the family we were born into. Right. And so there are a lot of blended families in this world. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So if you have a spouse that has been taking care of your child or your children, and there's an absentee parent, whether they're just absentee because they're deadbeat, or they're absentee because, God, you know, God forbid, they passed on, right. or whatever the reason they're absentee, mm -hmm. they are not present in the child's life. But your spouse is, and that spouse wants to adopt the child. Yeah. It is a beautiful process, and I would love to be a part of that. Okay. We can make that happen. So, this is Lawyer Mino. I remember a case I was listening to the other day it happened in the 70s. There's a man who enjoyed two of his current wife's children and he loved them so much he adopted them and in the divorce he had to pay child support. Is that something that's normal or like in adoption how can the custody battle go with that? Okay so when you adopt that child is, becomes as if it were your biological child. Oh, okay. So, if, if you choose not to adopt your stepchild and you pass on, that child is not entitled to inherit because they're not your biological child. You've had the opportunity to adopt and you elected not to. That's mm -hmm. the way the courts see it. Okay. So, unless you specifically name them out, they won't inherit. Okay. Okay. Now, as far as the question you asked, divorce, if you have a child, a biological child with your spouse, and you get divorced, will you have to pay child support? Yes. You're gonna be on the child's birth certificate after you adopted the child. That other parent oh, will no okay. longer be a parent on the, like, on the adopt, on the, the day you sign, the judge signs the adoption is finalized, you get a stack of copies of that finalized adoption and you have to go to the social security office and take there you have to go to the send it off to the birth wherever's birth state yeah. and send it there the name will change on that birth certificate you now become that biological parent oh, in every okay. sense of the word including child support mm -hmm. All right. sweet so here you go, peeps. if you have a stepchild just remember Last but not least, business 
um, formation. So, um, you know, as Caribbean people, we like our own. Mm -hmm. We always have some hustle going on. <laughs> so the minute we decide to convert the hustle into a real business, sometimes we don't know where to start. Yeah. And so I can help you with that. I can help you form your LLC. And it's not a good idea to be a sole proprietor okay. because if you, you know, America, we love to sue. <laughs> <laughs> and so if for some reason you, you are found negligent for something, yeah. even if it's an innocent act, you are liable. You hold so all, all liability, you hold all that. All of it. Mm. So you know that nice house that you work so hard to pay off? Yeah. Gone. Gone. Depending on the level of liability. Right. You Oof. know, you, you ride, you like. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> yeah. You know that nice bank account you've been building up? Oof. Yeah. Mm. And if and if all of those things don't cover the debt, you're walking. Yeah. Mm. Uh. So uh. could this benefit? Is it your business account or your personal account? So if you incorporate, then and you get sued. That party can only attach assets that the corporation owns. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, Carlin, apart from those services just mentioned earlier, we just spoke about, do you have, do, does, does your firm offer any other services? No, not at this time. Okay, okay, cool. Well, we do offer a lot, though. <laughs> <laughs> at least she's helping the community. Yes, 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 definitely. So, growing up Caribbean, how do you think that your heritage has shaped you and what do you think would be a favorite memory? that has shaped your experience? A favorite memory. I would say running my grandmother's rental properties. Mm -hmm. Like I remember um, in junior high school, you know, most kids are playing or trying to figure out if they're going to the dance or whatever. And yeah. I have this big position, I collect in rent and I put <laughs> people out, you know? <laughs> You're just not at my level yet. <laughs> How old were you? What's that, 12, okay. 11, 12? Wow. Remember that, guys. Wow. Young viewers watching, you can kick people out at the age of 12. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're doing it behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're in a Caribbean country, not America. Yes. <laughs> but you know, even in America, mm -hmm. you are, if you have a business, you're entitled to employ your children. And there's huge tax write-offs for that. Tax is another area I love. I know of a, um, a family-owned business, they just gave their two sons a Takaria to run and it's them and their cousins and that's just helping them to shape their business experience in the future. Let's just say these children are good for life. Yes, my kids, my twins, um, I have them saving up money mm -hmm. so that they can purchase a piece of land and um, have their very own tenant. And as much as I would like to just go out and buy it for them, yeah. they're not going to appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have to save on the for process, it. Yeah. And just my husband is a contractor. Mm -hmm. And so they will go with him on the weekends or once a month, however his time permits. And they will work on that raggedy run out building or whatever and build it up. Yeah. And see, like I did, I mean, granted my grandmother already had the house and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. up there. But they'll have that first-hand experience, experience. Mm -hmm. like what I did. Yeah. And then when they have that ownership and they see, okay, we invested this 5000 and this $10,000, so we didn't get to play whatever them things are they play now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spending the money on yeah. my, what my grandmother called the idiot box. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's several versions of it today. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And um, they will understand that, you know, what people say go to school make good grades so you can get a good job no mm -hmm. i want you to get whatever your destiny says you don't have to work for somebody mm. get get a good career if you want yeah be a good entrepreneur right own have a piece of the pie 
you know, as Caribbeans, we like to own. Yeah. And so that's why one of the reasons I love landlord tenants. It's like it brings back memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Carolyn, let's say I'm ready to get my affairs in order. As right? you should be. Yes. <laughs> and I'll schedule an appointment with your firm and stuff, right? Take me through a checklist process on how things would go. Okay. So, I try to operate virtually. Mm -hmm. This is before COVID. COVID. Yeah. Um, and so, this is my wills and trust questionnaire okay. that I would email to you after you've you know, we settle up our fees and you signed your retainer agreement. Right. And you want to take some time and look over these questions. Okay. <clears throat> A lot of people think they know what they want. Yeah. Until they start answering the okay. questions and really thinking about it. And I always suggest after you've filled it in and you've thought about it, discuss it with family. Mm -hmm. If you have children, a spouse, Discuss it with them. Yeah. Once you've completed it, you'll email it back to me or we can meet and I draft. I spend some time drafting it. Mm -hmm. And as I'm drafting, sometimes I'll have questions right. and I'll call you or I'll send you an email and you respond. After I have the initial rough draft completed, mm -hmm. I will email it to you for you to review. Okay. And once you've reviewed it, if you haven't changed your mind on the terms right. or whatever, you'll say we're good to go. Okay. And once we're good to go, then we'll schedule a meeting. That's when we'll sit down. Okay. We'll sit down in a room like this mm -hmm. and I'll have a notary ready. You'll have your two witnesses. Okay. If you don't have two witnesses, I can provide it as long as you let me know ahead of time you need the witnesses. Right, right. Whomever you select to be your financial power of attorney, mm -hmm. I need to know what state they're in and so forth. So I, there's a form that they will need to notarize. Mm -hmm. You need to discuss these things. You know, as Caribbean people, we like to keep things secret. Yeah, 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 yeah. my financial power of attorney, but I ain't gonna tell her, just yeah. in case. <laughs> discuss it with them. Mm -hmm. She has to sign, get it signed by the notary or in front of the notary rather. Mm -hmm. So they're here then you know uh, we can get that done okay you keep the form that's how you protect yourself oh, okay you keep the form in the same place where the will is and so forth mm -hmm. and you say but when i die i can't tell them where the stuff is so i have uh my firm has produced this little booklet that i give you with your documents and in this booklet not only will you let them know where the will is and so forth mm -hmm. Your administrator that you select, a nice little letter from me. Okay, okay. Professional. I try, I try. <laughs> so, a lot of things we don't think about. You have subscriptions, whether there's magazine subscriptions or Weight Watcher subscriptions or whatever. You don't want these things to continue charging your estate. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. Mm -hmm. You know, you know cell phone. Yeah. Everyone. You know, so you want to go ahead and write down what all subscriptions and so forth you have, so your administrator can immediately cancel them. Right, right. Otherwise, your estate is going to continue to pay for it. Okay. Passwords. So you know, do you want to keep your Facebook up and running? Yeah you know, your Yahoo mail, whatever it is that mm -hmm. you have password protected. Okay. I'm not saying give this to anybody before you die. Yeah. But you put it somewhere so that it's secure. Right. And you know how many times you change your passwords? Yep. So we have lots of space here <laughs> in, the, in the password section for you to update and um, social media information. Mm -hmm. What handles do you have? Right. You know, when I was putting this book together, there was some social media stuff that I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. your administrator, let's assume they don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you put that there so that you're making things easier for the, your loved ones mm -hmm. when you leave. Contacts. So if you're doing just a will, but it, it, actually even a will or a trust, Mm -hmm. There are going to be people you're going to name in the will and the trust and I like you and everything but I don't know you personally Person. right, yeah. so I don't know how to contact them. Okay. Leave it in here. Okay. Then that's one less step yes. in the process. Now I don't have to run a publication mm -hmm. and so forth to contact these people. So and this, these are the things that are 
and you see there's lots of room yeah, for that in yeah. case you have lots of family <laughs> like us <laughs> right so and here you go you can have that oh and thank you yes that's for you and i actually brought one for you as well thank you thank you you said you need to get started on that we get him <laughs> gifts boy <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So, and you'll see that it has my contact information on there. So if, you know, any of my clients do just a will, mm -hmm. obviously the will has to be probated. Okay. So you want to have an attorney to handle that. Okay. And they can contact me. But even if they don't use me, mm -hmm. let's say they can't find the will because you didn't put it in your booklet or you threw your booklet away by accident or right. whatever. So they don't know where the will is. They can contact me to get a copy of the will. Oh, okay. Very one stop shop. One stop shop. Very clear and concise. I love it. Thank you. You're this welcome. has made me think a lot and make me want to like plan for the future. Yeah. Yeah. This is If you stay ready you would have to get it. Yeah. See that? <laughs> so and, and, and if you see our logo, planning is bringing the future to the present so that you can do something about it. I like that. That's the new logo, lingo for the Caribbean network. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you have it, folks. Miss Carolyn S. DeWint, Esquire, founder of DeWint Legal Services, where the slogan is, planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. So guys, you know at the Caribbean network, we never like to come empty-handed give and we always love to give so on the behalf of the caribbean network just a small token of our appreciation for having you today thank you you can open it now and show yes. the camera i love this little bear fudgy <laughs> sorry about that you're fine, we're fine. oh thank you and it's pink just for you just for you <laughs> just for you so you can um, tell our viewers where they can find you, social media, email, or website. So my email is dewentlegal at gmail.com and you can find me on Facebook. All you have to do is type in wearetransactionallaw.com. Oh, awesome. So Carolyn, here at the Caribbean Network, we have a slogan, right? And our slogan is, your network is your net worth. How would you see that slogan impacting you in your business and just you in general? Well, I think that um, as with all other groups of people, mm -hmm. you know, we tend to gravitate to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I find myself having a lot of Caribbean clients. Okay. Yeah. And we do what we do best. <laughs> <laughs> we talk. <laughs> So besides breaking bread, we talk, yes, you know, yes, yes. and so I feel like if I give good service, mm -hmm. word of mouth, right. in the Caribbean industry, It'll it's, spread. Spread. it's far. going to spread like wildfire. California fires have nothing on us. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, that's how I feel like it's impacted me. Okay. Just word of mouth. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, Carlin, on behalf of us here at the Caribbean Network, we would like to thank you for having us and hosting us here. It was a pleasure talking to you today. It was a pleasure meeting you guys nice and talking to you guys. Too. And thank you. Yo, you're you're very welcome. Right. Well, guys, you can find the Caribbean Network at thecaribbeannetwork.com or on all social media platforms at the Caribbean Network. I'm your host, Shakaina. I'm Benzo. And, and we are your hosts for the Caribbean Network. Network. And now, it's time for the Carib Lingo Word of the Day. And now it's time for the Carib Lingo Word of the Day. Today's Carib Lingo Word of the Day is breadfruit. So breadfruit is a tree and fruit native to the Pacific Islands and Malaysia. It was brought to the Caribbean and the rest of the West Indies in the 18th century. It's usually round and green, fleshy on the inside, you know what I mean? Most Caribbean islands, we either we boil it, we roast it, sometimes we eat it raw. Well, in Jamaica, we fry it. And it's commonly eaten in Jamaica, but commonly used in other English-speaking Caribbean countries like Jamaica, mm -hmm. USVI, Guyana, 
Trinidad. But hold on, what's your favorite type of breadfruit? Roast breadfruit. I mean. But what's yours? Oh, boiled breadfruit with some what? boiled fish. Oh, what? okay. Well, as I said, the fried breadfruit with some Akian salt fish, and you just dip it in. Brother. You like breadfruit? Listen, hey, we have something in my freezer right now. Mm, watch out. <laughs> you can call me, yeah. call me, yes. So, guys, that's the word of the day bread fruit. Yum. If you um use or you know about this fruit, drop your flags in the comments. You understand? And if, if there's any specific word from any island that you want to be heard featured in this segment, send us a DM. Continue to talk the talk. This is the Curb Lingo Brilliant. segment.